So here's the review for our test. We're starting up here on page 90 where we need to do 1 through 16 all. You also have page 75 and page 89 that you need to do these problems on them. Um, I'm going to do some of them on this video, not all of them, so here we go. I'm going to choose to do the even ones. So we're here on number two. It says the equation 6 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 6 is an example of the what property. And up here we see is it, we know it's addition. So we know it's going to be something that has to do with addition. And we know is, um, we want to know is it associative property of addition or the commutative property of addition? Well, we know it's commutative right off the bat because it doesn't have any of those parentheses. And all we have is a 6 plus 3 and a 3 plus 6. We just switch it around. So we'll, we're going to put commutative property of addition. That's how I'm shorthanding that. And we're on to number 4. Up here, it says 6 plus 5 is equal to 5 plus, And they want you to fill in the blank. So we're going to put a 6 there. And that, again, is the commutative, commutative property of addition. Down here to number 6, we have 8 plus 9 in parentheses is equal to, or sorry, plus 10 is equal to what plus 9 plus 10? And this time the 9 and the 10 are in the parentheses. So right here, of course, we're going to put in our 8. And we know that because this has these have parentheses and we're just moving them from being around the 8 and the 9 to being around the 9 and the 10, that we're moving them from, or that it is associative property um, of... And what does it have? It's also of addition, because we are adding. Okay, so down here we've done 6. We're going to do 8 now. We have 6 times 3 plus 6 times 5 is equal to what times 3 plus 5? Well, remember, we want to find what's in common in both of these. And in this case, it's the 6. So we know our 6 goes on the outside there. And that is what we want to call the distributive property because we're kind of working backwards, right? Usually our distributive property, we distribute the 6 to the 3 and the 5. Well, over here, they already have done it for us. So over here, they've already done it for us. So let's move on to number 10. We have 12 plus 6 equals 6 plus 12. And remember, at any point, you can pause me and do the odds because you do have to do that for your assignment. I'm just only doing the easy, one, the even ones. Um, so 12 plus 6 and 6 plus 12. Well, again, that's the commutative, commutative property of addition. Okay, number 12. All right, number 12. Uh, they want us to state the property. So again, it is distributive. We distribute that 4 to the 21 and the 15. Think of handing something out. I'm distributing the 4. I'm making it even. I want to give the 4 to the 21, and I want to give the 4 to the 15. So we know that that, again, is distributive property. Okay, so for number 14, we're using um, the problem solving. And for some reason, the, the question didn't pop up. So I'm going to read the question for you right now. It says, Joaquin went to a yard sale on Saturday. He bought six pairs of jeans for $2 each and four sweaters also for $2 each. $2 each. So write two equations representing the total number of money T Joaquin spent at the store. So we're going to do that first. First, we're just writing the equation. And then obviously in 15, we're going to actually solve it. So the equation 
is going to be t, because they told us they want us to use t. t is going to equal two dollars, because what's in common? It, what's in common is that he spent two dollars on both jeans and sweaters. Two dollars on two pairs of jeans, and oh, excuse me, no, two dollars on six pairs of jeans and four sweaters. So that's our equation. You also could have written two times six for two times six um, plus two times four. So again, that would just be if we distributed this. So here for number 15, 15, we'll bring it down here. They actually want us to solve this. How much money in T did Joaquin spend? So what is 2 times 6? 2 times 6 is 12, plus what's 2 times 4? Uh, oh, I almost put 24. <laughs> 2 times 4 is 8. 12 plus 8 is 20. So Joaquin spent $20. So now we have 16 and it says reflect, write a summary that explains the commutative, associative, and distributive properties. Include an ex examples of each property. Examples meaning plural, so maybe one or two. Now, we've done a lot of talking about these properties in class this week, so this should not be too hard. What I'd like to see is you defining each of these properties and giving me at least one or two examples of each. Okay, we are now on to page 75. We're doing number 51. This is page 75, number 51. It says, what is the value of this whole expression? Well, now this is going to take us a lot of room, right? So we have 3, 2, 5 minus 4, plus 3, times 2 minus 4. Oh, wow, this is a lot. Okay, so I want you to try and work this out on your own. Pause me and see if you get the same answer. Remember, our answer needs to be working in a downward direction like that. So your answer should look like that. So that should be the answer you get for number 51. Working it out, you first did distributive property up here for both of these. You then uh, subtracted those two to get your values here and here. You got 3 times 8, and you got 24 for your final answer. Over here, it should be A. Okay, so we're still on page 75, but I'm skipping over to do a couple of these down here. And I really want to focus on this one, number 58, actually. Um, it says that they want you to write a verbal expression for each algebraic expression. So this, again, is an algebraic expression. How we know that is there is a variable, n, and a number, and there is no equal sign. If we look over here, there's no equal sign. So we want to write a verbal expression. How would we say this? Well, we would say this is multiplication 20 times n. So we want to know the product of 20 and a number. Now, even though we would say 20n, we cannot have that be the answer. So this is, yes, a possible answer. This is not a possible answer, 20, uh, 20n. We can't also have, um, so basically a word has to go in between the 20 and the n. We could have 20 times n or something like that, but we cannot, again, 20n is not a possible answer. So another one I want to do is here at 61, m divided by n plus 10. So we want to say the quotient, quotient of what? m and n 
M and N. And then what are we doing? Oh yeah, we're adding 10. So we want to say plus 10. And you're done. Okay, I'm just going to do number 32 and then I'll be done for the day. Um, it says what value of H makes the equation true? So we want to know basically 168 divided by what is going to equal 24? And they give you a list of numbers over here. So let's try one. I would like to do multiplication rather than division. So I'm going to say 24 times what is going to give me 168 down here. And we also want to know what is that? That's going to be H. So I want to put in, I think 8 is a good estimate. Um, so 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 2 is 16, 17, 18, 19. We get 192. So I'm too, too high. So if it's not 8, then I guess it must be 7. So let's try it. 24 times 7. 24 times 7 is 28. 7 times 2 is 14. 148. Oh, 7 times 2 is 4. I was like, ah, uh, that's weird. 14, 15, 16. Oh, there we go. See, everyone makes mistakes. So 7 times 2 is 14, but we want to add this 2 up here, so we get 168. So that must be our answer. So go ahead and complete all the rest of your problems, which again, I'll show you, is right here, page 90, 1 through 16, all and then pages 75 and 89 do 51 through 62, 30 through 45.